also um, had to make this jig to be able to push this bearing off. So I've cut some, cut the retaining ring and made this jig a little while ago uh, just to be able to push bearings out on a Hilux. Um, so we'll get this jig on and we'll press it out. cut it off and it split. It's the tension washer, so don't lose those if you ever pull these apart. Now I'll just clean everything up and we'll push the new bearings back on. So fortunate enough to uh, have had a spare axle lying around. Uh, so I've already pulled this one off, but I'll show you exactly how to get these bearings off because they're a pain in the backside. Um, give me the old tapered bearings any day of the week. So obviously um, part of the, the install is taking the backing plates off that hold the, the drum. To do that without cutting it off, you need to uh, press the bearings off. Now I made this um, collar and it's out of one of the old bearings that I've pushed off. I've cut a slit in that, so when I'm pushing on it, I'm pushing on this, not on the outside of the bearing. And because I've cut the slit in it, it means I'll be able to pull that sleeve back off when I need to do the next step. Certainly not the lightest piece of kit around, that's for sure. Next step is, is this little compression washer. So that puts preload on the inside of the bearing. And then there's these locking collars now. These are a pain in the backside because when you need to replace your bearings, there's two of these on the vehicles that have ABS. Uh, you need to cut these off in order to be able to press the bearings out. Um, yeah. Unless, of course, you've got a super strong press and then there's every chance that you could probably potentially damage the flange trying to push them off. But um, that's on there and we'll get our tool and then we'll push this on. Soon I need to put a circlip on here as well, which holds all that together to make sure that it doesn't decide it wants to walk its way back up the, the actual shaft and your actual shaft comes out and overtakes you on the highway. Um, so you'll know soon enough if you push that back on because properly, otherwise uh, you won't be able to get that circlip back on. So that's pressed on. We'll use our Take that off. So clip sits in that groove. And we'll use our little spacer again that we used for the for the press. To 
help push that on. these circles, just grab a punch and then just make sure that that circle is actually sitting in there properly and that it's not going to pop out on you because that would make for a very good trip. So once we've got that on, we have the ABS pole ring to put on, and then we've got another one of these sleeves to put on. So we'll push all that on. So ABS ring, and then another one of these. So there's our little press tool, the retention collar. Now this, actually the seal inside the axle actually runs on this as well, and then the ABS turn ring. So that's it all stacked up. Uh, time to press it in. So that's one axle done. Now, just gotta pull the other one out and do the other one. that seal out that's in there and then pop a new one in and then we can start putting the new axle and bearings back in. Let the seal out. Made this with some scrap lying around uh, tool to install the new seal. So that will go in there. And it's the same diameter as the seal. So hopefully that will stop it from deforming when I put it in. So we just have some aviation former gasket. It's non-hardening. Um, so I'll just put some of that on the outside of the seal um, just to make sure that it's sealed, that the metal surface is sealed and it doesn't leak.
después so just um, get a razor blade and clean up the flange Itself. I know there's an O ring there which is designed to, to stop any oil from leaking out. But um, just from experience, I've never been 100% successful in getting these to seal. Shaft with new bearings. And that's so. Um, look at the bracket, which will bolt on like such, and then the caliper and the drum disc. Sorry, disc. And then bolt one over that. So, in the kit, comes with some new bolts because obviously you're adding extra material on there with the with the bracket. You need longer bolts to take up the extra meat that you've got on there. And once again, these are cone lock nuts, so they're not going to come off. And unlike nylock nuts, if it gets super hot, uh, the ny nylon part is not going to melt out and cause them to come loose. Same design nut as what you find in a lot of exhaust manifolds. access to a sandblaster that would be awesome just to clean it off and make sure that the surface is flat gone and stop it from running away just put some nuts on there just 
just a, um, a general note. The factory front discs on this particular Hilux are 298 millimeters in diameter. Um, these are actually 315, so they're quite a bit bigger than even the, the what's on the front by standard. I've actually done a Prado upgrade on the front of this, uh, so I've used the discs and calipers off a 150 Prado, uh, which then brings it up to 338, so it's a, almost a 340 mil rotor on the front. Um, so hopefully with the, the disc rear end and the upgraded front, uh, stopping should not be one of my problems anymore. sitting in there. Now, because uh, this is a later model Hilux and has a bigger bearing, um, there's some spaces that come in this kit. To make sure that the spacing is correct uh, with the disc. So these spaces come in the kit and they just sit in between the caliper and that bracket. So instead of obviously having to make two different types of brackets, um, that's the, the quickest and easiest way. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and that spacer just sits up there and then make sure that the caliper is spaced out correctly. Obviously if you have taken the caliper off or if someone else is servicing your car, um, you wanna just make sure that you're mindful and don't drop these spaces anywhere and lose them. Obviously, if I ever am on the trail and I break an axle, this, if I ever spare one of these, it is so much easier to change because all I need to do is just take the caliper off, take the disc off, those four bolts on the back, and then this slides straight out and I can slide the new one straight back in. Don't have to worry about with drum brakes and adjusting it and all the rest of it. Or the other big thing, is with the, the drums on it, when you pull this axle out, you have to disconnect this brake line on the back. So if you're on the trail, you would have to bleed your brakes again. Uh, with this setup, if you were to snap an axle or do a wheel bearing or something like that, um, yeah, you just pull the caliper off, set it off to one side, and then you don't have to worry about bleeding your brakes. So from a repair point of view, uh, this setup is so much better as well. Not only from a, a braking point of view, so these don't come in the kit, um, but these are GU front uh, brake lines. And I've chosen to go with braided ones. Um, and the big reason for going for braided lines are over uh, your standard um, rubber ones is that braided lines don't uh, expand as, as much when you put your foot on the pedal um, and what that does is that actually gives you a firmer pedal and because when the, the brake lines expand that is obviously uh, taking away pressure that you're actually applying to the brakes. These are ADR compliant brake lines so if you're concerned about um, roadworthiness, uh, these are ADR compliant brake lines. And obviously um, 
even if you're not doing one of these brake upgrades uh, on your, your vehicle, uh, it's not a bad upgrade just by themselves. Uh, the brake pedal, the feel that you get on your brake pedal is a million times better uh, with braided brake lines. Bending brake lines like that is not, not necessarily a bad thing either. Um, obviously you don't want to do it constantly, um, but bending them to a particular position and then just leaving them there um, is not going to do any permanent damage to them. Um, like I said, you just don't want to be doing that all the time. Uh, but when doing a modification like this, there is no harm in bending it like that. Probably the only thing that doesn't come in this kit that would be nice is just something to support uh, that brake line where there was like a bracket off the, the back of the flange or whatever, but that's um, it's not going anywhere. So there you go guys, that is one side done. Now, that's one side done. I'll do the other side and then it's just bleeding the brakes and, and it's done, but that is super nice setup and hopefully on the road test it'll make a massive difference i'll probably have to play around with the um the bias valve on the back or the load sensing valve on the back um but no should be good